The city of Manila begins to hum at the crack of dawn, a metropolis of some 12 million people. Like a magnet, it has drawn thousands of fortune seekers from the provinces. While waiting for job opportunities, they have coped by living in congested slum areas, making do with what little space they can squeeze their families into, and the meager basic services, if any, that come their way. Water was not one of them. One of them. In 1997, they, there was only 26% coverage. This is 24-7 coverage. For the family of Fela Chica, mother of six, most mornings begin with waiting for water. The lines are long and the price steep for daily wage earners. Pag nagigib naman po, uh, depende sa iigib, ang container po, 3 pesos, ang balde, 2 pesos. Diyan lang po sa malapit din sa amin. Fair runs a mom and pop store, and the older children take turns tending it, but only after their water fetching duties are done. The family uses up about one drum of water for their daily needs. They don't always have enough money to fill it. Katalagang kakapusan ng tubig, ang dalawang balde, ang tatlong container, kinagkaka siya sa ilang maliligo. Kasi kung wala, eh, alam nga naman na gasto siya yung sala ng, ano, sa pagkain, paninom, pinipipin. Often, it takes two to fetch water. Arthur and Wilfredo, 14 and 10, know the drill. Isang kasama ko ito. Siya yung tagasal na wala yung tagabungan. Ang budget po namin, ma'am, sa tubig, uh, pinaglalaanan yan kasi mahalaga ang tubig, ma'am. Ibaling walang ibang pangangailangan, basta yung tubig meron. Pag munti na yung gasan mga nasa tatlong ano lang po ginagamit, tatlong tabo para makatubig. Tapos yung iba po pinanilinis na sa loob ng bahay. Tapos minsan po, pag ubus na po yung tubig, nagigib ulit. Today, for millions of informal settlers in Manila, the situation is no longer as hopeless as it used to be, thanks to a public-private partnership instituted in the mid-90s that allowed the private sector to become concessionaires of the government-owned Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System, helping deliver the service more efficiently to communities that needed it most. Manila Water was one of them. Prior to the privatization of uh, the Metro Manila franchise area, uh, there were very terrible conditions. Very few people had access to water. And of those who had access to water, barely a fourth had them 24 by 7. And they've had to line up for hours on end, most often in the early hours of the day. Uh, often it would take four hours just for them to get water by the pail and pay extremely high rates. Magising kami alas 4, madaling araw, para makapila kami ng maaga. Kay sa barangay, pag pasado ko na alas 5, mahaba ng pila, eh, tanghali ka na makabalik. Kasi lahat ng taga rito, hindi lang taga rito, doon nag sa barangay. Apart from the time it took, ever worried about the boys slipping and falling while carrying the filled containers. Every so often, relationships with neighbors and others became strained over the waiting. Ngayon minsan, magkasagupan ka rin kaya siyempre mayroon naman nga gustong uh, mauna. Siyempre ikaw naman eh, nakapila ka. Minsan may konting kuhan magkasagutan. The fetching of water was a family activity and its prudent use the central concern of Ever, his wife Josephine, and the children as well. Ano, ginatipid. Ang inanlawa namin, ginaipon pa yan para pang buhos. Ibang kilos mo, parang marumi ang katawan mo. Ang damit mo nang hindi masyadong malinis kasi nagtitipid ka sa tubig. Mayroon talaga, lalo yung mag-CR ka. Yung gusto mo maligo, gusto mo uminom ng tubig, wala ka matubig. Kailangan mo pa umigib talaga sa taas. Kailangan mo pa doon pumila na maapat. Manila Water began its search for a more sustainable solution with an analysis of the barriers, and there were several. The first and most important obstacle was actually psychological. People had the general assumption that the poor people 
could not afford to pay for piped water. Which is really ironic because they would pay four, five, six times what it cost for piped water at the time. To connect a family to piped water, you have connection fees. This is the cost that one has to pay for the meter to be set up, for the line to be connected from their home into the, uh, to the mains of the water network. Some poor families could not afford that one-time expense. There is resistance, obviously, among existing providers, the mobile vendors, the local community mafia, where they are engaged in water delivery, that's one. The solution lay in a multifaceted program that was flexible enough to adjust to each community's unique situation. Manila Water's Tubig Para Sa Barangay, or Water for the Community, seemed to offer the right conceptual framework, but the changes would likewise have to stem from within. Tubig Para Sa Barangay primarily aims to help build communities by improving the quality of life of the people in the urban poor communities. So we're doing this by providing uh, potable water at affordable cost. And not only the water per cubic meter, but also the uh, connection fee for the application for a water service connection. We also provide an uh, installment basis to assist the community if they cannot afford to pay the full amount of the connection fee. It forced the organization also to evolve over time. So internally, we had to go through a corporate transformation. Before uh, the privatization of our zone, uh, the operations was highly centralized. There's hardly anything that, that is significant that you could get done outside of the head office. The overall design of the program called for service on a more personalized human scale via on-the-ground leadership this being the culturally preferred mode of interaction within Filipino communities. Manila Water divided its East Zone service area into smaller district metering zones. Territory managers were assigned to specific geographical segments, and in each box, so to speak, were five marbles. Build volume, credit and collection, non-revenue water, customer service quality, and community relations. So, we brought management to the ground and had them interface as closely as possible with the customer. Nung unang na-assign ako sa tubig para sa barangay, uh, I don't know where to start. So ang ginawa ko, nilis ako lahat ng mga areas na walang tubig, then prioritize ko kung alin yung medyo miserable ang kalagayan. Unang-una, uh, sa isang barangay, Courtesy call man lang sa barangay captain. Kilalanin yung mga kagawad, mga officials, and then down to the smallest unit ng, ano, ng community. Homeowners president, yun, yung mga tipong gano'n. Kapitbahayan, batiin mo bawat isa sa kanila. Yung concern nila, bilisan mo ang aksyon para maramdaman nila na you care. There was no single mold of solutions as the managers discovered. Working closely with the community gave them the leeway to be more creative in how the infrastructure could best be laid out. Also, how to partner more effectively with local government. Customization became part of the design. Kasi iba-iba kasi iskin namin sa tubig sa para, para sa barangay kung paano yung paglalagay ng metro. So, para dun sa mga masisikip yung kalye, so ginagawa na lang namin clustered yung mga metro we in doon sa bungad ng ali doon namin kinaklaster yung mga ano yung mga metro the community itself had to become an important element in the successful continuing delivery of water service in every case the results were nothing short of dramatic we also had to enter into a so, sort of a so, social compact with the community that once we deliver the, the service they need to be part owner of, uh, in protecting the water asset. And there is also pressure among Filipinos that uh, obviously if everyone is buying water, uh, behaving as a citizen and one of the uh, homeowners will just steal water, well, uh, that's not good practice. So we have very strong peer pressure 
uh, here in, in our community, in our society, we also leverage the uh, uh, Filipino character, okay? So this approach enabled us really to deliver the service. Much to our surprise, our collection efficiency went up from less than 50% to nearly 100%. For the Abesars, waiting for water is now just a distant memory. Malaking tulong ngayon. Sang sa noon. Kasi ginatipid mong tubig eh. Ngayon, <laughs> sa gabi pwede mo maliguan. Sa isang araw, tatlong bisis, tanghali, pwede mo maliguan. Bali, nag-iba yung schedule namin. Unang-una, bali, kung gusto magising ng medyo tulot tanghali, pwede Kasi nandiyan naman yung tubig, nakaribi naman lang. Uh, pagbukas mo lang, nakaribi na may tubig na. Dati, ma madadatnan na yung mga tao sa community. Kakain sila ng mga bilis. Sa totoo lang, may kumakain ng asukal at asin. Dahil bibili sila ng tubig na pang inom. Pero then later on, makikita mo na pag may tubig na sila, mayos na sila. May fried chicken na dyan. May mga bago ng chinelas. Kasi ang laki ng diferensya, yung 100 pesos a day, uwasan mo ng 10 piso ng tubig, dalawang araw na nilang gamit. May 90 pesos ka pa para sa uh, ibang pangangailangan mo. The Lachikas may not have that much longer to wait. And if all goes well, they will have piped water flowing by Christmas. In many communities, piped water is usually the start of a chain of good breaks for everyone. Uh, siguro ma'am, kung kami eh, makabita na ng tubig dito, kahit na papano, eh, lahat ma'am ng mga batang kulang sa paligo, baka ba ma-supplyan na sila kasi mura na ang tubig. Magmula nung napatubigan yung area, yung Cases ng di diarrhea cases, bumababa yung di diarrhea cases. Pag nakapasok na ang Manila water, parang nagsunod-sunod na yung development. Pag punta mo ulit doon sa area after one year, maayos concrete na yung kanilang uh, mga kalsada. Tapos may mga basketball court na sila, may mga health center na sila. You have clean water, so you have better health, so you won't have so many sick days. And you multiply that by the number of poor we have, that goes a long way. This tubig para sa barangay enabled us in the last 13 or 14 years to add uh, 3, 3.2 million customers to the base that we had at the start of the concession, more than half of which are from the lower income groups. If that did not happen, then I don't think we could sustain our business, both from an economic point of view but as well from a social, community, and regulatory point of view. So it's, it's triple bottom line. It's not the vision of the board of directors, it's not the vision of the executives only. It's really a vision of the organization. And each one clearly sees how, what their own role in operationalizing that vision in the day-to-day -day work that they do. I think what makes Manila Water stand out as a company that's really truly committed to sustainable development and really has a heart. It can really bring that uh, sort of empowerment that's seen in the East Zone to the rest of the country. And I think that will go a long way uh, for the country's development. I honestly believe it's also applicable in other countries because it was, uh, we molded the, the uh, model in such a way that you need to involve the community in the delivery of that service. Kag kaano nang malinis kami sa loob ng bahay. Kasi madali lang ba gilos kay mi tubig ng Manila water. <laughs> may ginhawa po. May ginhawa talaga. Si po may gripo na po kami. 